concept in production theory is the marginal rate of technical substitution. Now, this is basically the production side analog to a marginal rate of substitution, which if you recall was the slope of an indifference curve. The marginal rate of technical substitution with a, um, with a two input production function is simply the slope of the isoquant. So let's uh, draw an isoquant up here just as a uh, reminder of what we're talking about. So we've got the use of capital on the vertical axis. We've got the use of labor on the other axis. And we've got some fixed level of output that's depicted here. So combinations of capital and labor, excuse me, can be used produce, to produce this level of output. You can either use a lot of capital and a little bit of labor, or you can use a little capital and a lot of labor, various uh, choices. So the marginal rate of technical substitution is really trying to get a sense of the trade-off between these two. And to do that, we want to look at the underlying production function. We're imagining that the amount of output that can be produced using capital and labor with technology can be summarized with the production function. You give me a level of capital, you give me a, a level of labor, and I can tell you how much output you get through the use of technology, which is the production function itself. Now, it ought to be clear that you know, the use of capital and labor over here is, ought to be related to this thing over here, because we've got output and we've got use of capital and labor and so forth. Well, how, how does it? Now, one thing about an isoquant ISO means the same, so isoquant means the same level of output. We're holding output fixed with different levels of use of capital and labor. So when we talk about an isoquant, we're talking about a situation where the change in output of Y is going to be zero. That's, that's really the whole point is that we're holding output fixed. How is it that output can change? It can, holding technology fixed, and we're, we're holding that constant, output can change because of either a change in the use of capital or a change, give myself a little bit more room here, It can be because of a change of, of, of the use of capital or a change in the number of units of labor used. But we also need to look at the, not just how many more units of capital, but how much extra output each unit of capital uh, creates. We need, we need to use the marginal productivity of capital, in other words. Okay, so the marginal productivity of capital, as we've talked about, is how much output changes if you change a unit of capital. The marginal productivity of labor, change in output, or a change in labor. Okay, so this part right here tells you the extra output I get if I change the unit, the use of capital by one unit, and that's how much extra output I get for every single unit of capital that I increase. Plus marginal productivity of labor. This side is how much extra output I get by hiring one more uh, a unit of labor 
and this tells you this tells you how many how many extra workers this tells you how much each worker brings now all of this for an isoquant adds up to zero change of use in capital change of use of labor and, and the productivities all those add up to zero by design because we're looking at a, a particular isoquant so these are all equal to zero so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring marginal productivity of labor over to the right hand side. Okay, I've just rearranged. I'm going to divide through by the marginal productivity of capital. Okay. And now I'm going to divide both sides by the change in labor. Okay, so we've got some things that cancel out. This cancels with that. Marginal productivity cancels. And what we're left with is that the change in capital over the change in labor okay, for an isoquant is equal to the ratio of the marginal productivity of labor to the marginal productivity of capital along an indifference curve that the slope is equal to this. If you recall, the slope of a curve is the slope of a line drawn tangent to that curve. So at point one, we've got a marginal productivity of labor over a marginal productivity of capital okay that at that first combination now let's imagine that we and we've got an associated use of capital and labor now we're going to substitute labor for capital keeping output fixed let's look for example at point two <clears throat> we've got a new slope which is flatter okay just looking at the at the simple um, graphical version of this what does that mean I am using more labor and reducing the amount of capital. How does that affect marginal productivity of labor and capital? If I use more labor relative to the capital, then the marginal productivity of labor is falling as I use more labor. If I'm using less capital, the marginal productivity of capital goes up. Combination of these two, going from a point one to point two, makes the ratio smaller. Now we will use this idea about the slope of the indifference curve equal to the relative marginal productivities of labor and capital to analyze the optimal choice of labor and capital because ultimately these productivities how much extra output I get by using labor and capital is going to be related to 
how much it costs to, to hire them. But that is the subject of a, of a different video. But marginal rate of te technical substitution, simply the slope of an, an isoquant. And simply the ratio of the marginal productivities of the two inputs, uh, the two factor inputs.